welcome to another Miss Kate Cuttables design space tutorial. Today we're going to go over how we're making print then cut images with a white border around them. It's actually called an offset path. There's not a simple way to do an offset path in Cricut design space, but I'm going to show you a free way to make one that's really not that hard once you do it once or twice. These are the same print then cuts that you're seeing in the one minute makes that are sitting there while Kate's putting the layered SVGs together and the white border I really like it actually. So first things first let's go to misskatecuttables.com and find an image we want to use. Um, I like haunted houses so I'm going to search for haunted houses and find one that I want to make. I like this one. I'm going to add it to my cart. I'm already logged in so I'm going to go to my cart and click check out. I have a credit voucher. I can choose to use it later or use it now. I'm going to use it now. My address is the same as billing. I will click next. The shopping cart has a couple steps in it. Click next and it's still selected credit voucher. Credit card is fine because it's not going to charge me anything. Click next and place order. So it used my credit voucher for 53 cents. What I should have done is purchased two of them. So my order was over a dollar. So I would have gotten loyalty program points, but that's okay. I'll do it next time. So this is your download link right here. I'm going to click download haunted house. It's downloading the zip file. I can open the zip file so it's unzipped now and here you'll see the SVG the PNG the JPG full color instructions and our copyright information so now we're going to go to Cricut Design Space and I am going to upload this SVG browse it went into my downloads haunted house haunted house SVG now this SVG is a few years older and I chose this knowing that it was going to come like this. This one doesn't have the layered together and the layered separate. It's just separate. But I'm going to show you how to quickly fix that. So it's uploading. I'm going to select it and insert it. Now I have my whole image. I like to make them big so I can see them. I'm going to ungroup and we're just going to layer them in order. Cricut Design Space knows what order they're in, so I like to go from right to left because the top layer is on the far left and usually it's a hair bigger to cover the layers behind. So I find it a little easier if I am doing it this way. Now, I'm gonna make it a little bigger and I've ungrouped it. So if you do this, make sure you select everything. You can either drag like I did, or on a Mac it is Command A, or on a PC it's Control A. If I just did one layer and made one layer bigger, nothing would fit together. So if I make sure that those two layers are lined up, and now I select them both and move them into the next one as close as I can, select both all three move it over here it's as close as I can get it and now I can take my top layer and set it right over top now if I select this I can make it a little bigger oh see I don't want to do that I did command Z undo because I have these other layers so I'm gonna quickly put this one here and it goes right about here yeah and then this everything goes right on here on the base. Now if I select all of them and then I come over here and I group. So now it's a group and I can always ungroup it but I want to look at it a little closer and yeah it looks pretty good. Well the moon. I'm gonna fix the moon. So I have to ungroup it and the tricky part is it wants to do the top layer first. So I'm gonna grab everything here and it will let me get the moon. Did you see how I, what I did? So I'm going to grab the moon and line it up better. Now it's lined up better. Now I'm going to grab the whole moon and put it back. Oh, I want to see a lot of it, as much as I can. And I want it a little high right there. So everything looks pretty good and lined up just right. So I group it back together. Now that's just the first step and that is the step to get everything ready for print then cut. 
Okay, so now in order to print then cut, I'm restricted by eight and a half by 11 paper and it wants the bottom to be 6.75, I believe. So we're gonna do, let's try 6.752 and see what it does. But see, I'm on cut. So now I have to flatten the image. Now it's gonna print then cut. So now I click make and it's too large. See 6.75. So I come here and it's barely too big. You want this as big as it'll possibly go because let's zoom in once or twice and see the bigger it is, the higher resolution the output is. So 6.748 is as big as I can make it. Okay, so now that I have this flattened into one image, I'm going to send it to the Printer. Click make it and then I click continue and send to printer and you're gonna say wait hold on Jeff I thought you were gonna make this a print then cut with a wipe order well this is where we do it instead of sending it to my printer and printing it I'm printing it as a PDF file what that's gonna do is write it as a file on the computer but I need to make sure that the bleed is on that's where the magic happens right there so I click print and then it will bring up a dialog box it takes just a second and then I click this down arrow PDF and select save as PDF. Then I select where I want to save it. I like to save everything in my downloads folder so I know where to find them later if I have to come back. So make sure you know what you want to save it so you can find it. I'm going to call this one Haunted House Offset Path. Click save and it just wrote my file. So now I can cancel out of this, print, tell it yes, and my file is still here. You have a PDF file on your computer. Cricut Design Space will not open the PDF, so we have to convert this PDF into a usable file. There's a free way to do it, and if you go to GIMP.org, GIMP.org is a free Photoshop type program that is available for Mac and PC. It's a great graphics program, and it's very powerful. It's just a little complicated, but for what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you what you need to do. So you click download, you can download the Mac OS X version or the Microsoft Windows version, whichever one you need. So I've already downloaded it and, and installed it. So I turn on GIMP and then we import the file. So I do file, open. I go to my downloads and find Haunted House Offset Path PDF. Now, I always like to turn the resolution up to at least 300 pixels per inch because the higher the resolution, the better it's going to be. So it brings up the print then cut file. But if you notice, it has the, the overbleed. So we've got to clean this up just a little bit. So right here is the crop tool. The little crosshairs, we're going to cut this border off of it. The print then cut registration marks. I select all that and press enter and it cut it out. Now I like to make things really big so I can see them. So if you do zoom, I went to, I went to view, zoom, fit image in window. Now it's big. Now we're going to use the magic wand tool. It's in Photoshop, it's magic wand. In GIMP, it's fuzzy select. So I select it. I select the white outside. And if I hold down the shift key, it will let me pick up these little white interior parts. I'm gonna get this one. This is actually in cut files. This is called compound path. So here's the compound path. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. So I do control Z back up once. Or Command Z on a Mac. Now I think I have everything I want. So if I do Command X or Control X, I'm gonna cut out all of it. So now it's just the image we want. So now, and I go Select Invert. And now it's selected the haunted house instead of the white. So if I pick up my pencil tool, make sure your hardness is all the way to 100 and the size is very large and then your color if it's black then you drag all the way to the black do okay so we're going to just color this all black and where it's all selected still it just did the selection now we're almost done so everything's black the way we want it. I do file, 
export as. We want to export this. You have to hold on the Mac version. You have to hold it down. We want to export this as a PNG. And then I think that we're going to go back to the downloads folder. Um, I want it to be called Haunted House Offset Path PNG. PNG export. And then we just click export. It writes the file. And now we can leave GIMP and go back to Cricut Design Space. Go to upload, upload image, browse. Haunted House, that's not the one we want. We want Downloads, Haunted House Offset Path PNG. That's why I added Offset Path. I always import everything as complex because it has the most detail. And the more detail you have, the better your cut or your print. Or your print then cut. So if you save it as a cut image, save. And it's right here. I select it. I insert it. Now it's way big, but I'm going to show you, first of all, let's change the color to white now because it's easier to see. And then I want to move it to the back because it's all about layers. Now, if we get the haunted house and I want it to be the size It takes a little bit of playing with it at this point. And let's zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to move one on top of the other. So it looks like I need to make the haunted house a little bigger. And I think we're good maybe a little bit down over I think I'm gonna make it a little bigger just because I get really picky on this kind of stuff that's what I learned from Kate that looks pretty even all the way around so now if I select the whole thing and I flatten it it's got the white border around it and then it's going to make it be 6.75. I'm looking at the bottom right here. 6.75 there, right there. Now let's see what happens. If I click make it, it will cut the border. It's in print then cut. I click continue and I'm going to send it to printer. Print to this one. I don't need print bleed anymore. Advanced options, just make sure your print settings are what you want because all printers are different. I know I need to go from tray three and I want to say it's cardstock and I can click print and it will print in my printer. Here is the finished print that I grabbed out of the printer. I just put it on the world's best cutting mat, the Miss K Cuttables cutting mat. They work amazing. You can get them at our Amazon store. I'm also using the Miss Kate Cuttables Premium German Carbide Standard Blades in Kate's Cricut Maker. The blades are also available on our Amazon store. I just love Kate's Rose Cricut Maker. I think it's so cute. And I also love the super speed modification I installed on it. It makes it cut four times faster. See how fast it is? No, I'm just kidding. I'm speeding up the footage. It's interesting to me that it chooses to cut one side at a time on the compound paths in the fence. And it's done. Let's take it off the mat and you will see the offset path. I really like how our mats peel. We worked really hard on the adhesive to get it just right. They're sticky enough to give you some good longevity on the mat, but they're not so sticky that they're going to destroy your projects. So here's the final print then cut. If you like this tutorial, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and we will see you on the next Miss K Cuttables tutorials.